Yeah, start. Recording is started. So recall, uh, in the last lecture, we introduced something called uh, uh, Riemannian symmetric pair. Okay. So, so suppose GH is a Riemannian symmetric pair. So our goal for the next two, three uh, lectures is something is to prove something. We will prove that G mod is a, is a Riemannian manifold. First. And after that, uh, we will prove that uh, this M is a uh, Riemannian symmetric space. Well, this is our goal for last two, two, three lecture. So let us. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, just wait. Uh, so let us uh, put the thing things in very general perspective. So, so today I we will first discuss something called isotropic representation. So, the GBLE group. which acts uh, transitively and uh, smoothly on a smoothly on a manifold level. So for a G belongs to G, uh, we define this thing. LG from M to M uh, given by this thing LG of M is really G dot. Uh, what? M is Riemannian manifold. No, no, just an M manifold. Okay. So LG of M is equal to G dot M. This is for M dot to M. So since this is a group action, this LG is a diffeomorphism of M. Clearly, this, by definition, it is a diffeomorphism. So clearly, LG is a diffeomorphism of M. Now, uh, you take this, uh, let P belongs to M. So, and H is equal to, really, G belongs to G. So, that G dot P is equal to this is stabilizer of P inside uh, G. So you will uh, then, if H belongs to a, H, then this LHP is really, the edge of P is really P. So if you look at this derivative of LHP, this will be a linear map uh, from P to TPM to TPM because LHP is P. because LH is a diffeomorphism, so this DLHP is an invertible linear map. Linear map of TPM. So we so this is DLHP is an invertible linear map of TPM. So now So we define uh, another map, define uh, a map tau from H to GL of TPM. This is given by tau of H is really DLH. Now since this L of H1 dot H2 is equal to really L of H1, composition L of H2. If I will take this derivative in this both side at the point P, D of L1, L of H1, H2 dot P is equal to really D of L of H1, P, composition D of L H2. So this is really tau of H1, H2. This is really tau of H1. So that means tau, hence tau from H to GL TPM is a group homology. Okay. 
so uh, thus uh, uh, these types of maps are called representation thus define say representation of on tpa called as a isotopy representation so now suppose m is very many symmetric space so now i come to the many manifold so suppose m is remain in symmetric space we we always take uh, this g is equal to really i am not this is the connected component of i am not and h is equal to really k which is okay so I, and so let p belongs to m be fixed so take we take h is equal to really k is this is equal to stabilizer of of a uh, p inside g and this is compact we have seen okay now we consider this isotopy representation on this uh, particular case and let us see now for in this setup if you look at we consider the uh, isotopy representation okay so Okay, tau from this k to so GLT. Now, what what happens if you look at this? For G belongs to G. This LG is emitting from M to M, and this is really given by this thing. LG of M is equal to G dot M and G is a uh, mapping from M to M because G is G is subset of I M, so this is actually G of M. In this case, uh, so thus L G is equal to actually G and D of L G at any point say M equal to D G of M. Now, if you consider the uh, therefore, tau of k, which is really a dk, dlk of p, and this is really a dk. So now, <clears throat> uh, now as a Now let uh, k belongs to k, and k is a subset of isometry uh, group M, I M. So, so as k belongs to I M, therefore, uh, okay. Uh, so, what I'm saying, let Q be the Riemann uh, metric on M. You took k inside I M or I M identity component of I M. See the thing is I M is a bigger group, right? K is a sub K inside uh, um, the identity component of uh, uh, I M. But the thing is uh, K is a bigger group. Uh, sorry, I M is a bigger group. Is it clear, Manoj? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So let Q the Q be the metric on. Uh, okay, so Q be the Riemannian metric on M. Sorry. Metric on M. So you what you will get this Q. This implies Q of. Anyway. As k belongs to I M, this will imply that. Uh, let us go to the next thing. Okay, so Q of k p. Okay, so d k p u d k p p 
is equal to nearly q of p ud now since k p is equal to p and dkp is equal to tau k so you will get this q of p and dkp is really tau k right so you will get this is tau k u tau k b is equal to q p u d so this implies tau k belongs to orthogonal group of Thus, uh, tau from k to orthogonal TPM is a group of numbers. Now the thing is, uh, suppose uh, this tau k is identity. Muna here, what do you mean by orthogonal group group of TPM? So really, on TPM there is an inner product QP, right? Yes. So on with respect to that inner product. So will I write here? No, no, no. See, this is QP. Uh, QP is isometry, right? Sorry. Inner product uh, is QT. Inner product is QP. Any k action by k is an isometry. So of course it will preserve QP, right? Ah, uh, that's what I am writing. Written. That's what I am writing. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. So DKP is the identity. So hence, uh, we get this uh, K is equal to identity because both identity and uh, DK uh, and K, these are same value and derivative at the point P. So k is collided, hence the representation is uh, hence tau is one one, and and the representation is faithful. This if tau is one one, the representation is called fixed. And the representation is faithful. No, sorry, I am uh, just a little bit confused. So you showed that uh, tau from k to the o, o orthogonal group of TPM that is a group homomorphism, mm. right? Mm. Now, is it related to this statement? Suppose tau k equal to identity, or it's a separate statement? It is separate statement. Separate statement. So I am proving that tau is one one. Tau is one one. Okay. Will I write here claim? Huh? Is it okay? Yes, yes. This is faithful and therefore uh, so tau is one this representation chain. We can identify tau k with k uh, regard uh, Regard that uh, this uh, regard K as a subgroup of uh, the subgroup of orthogonal group of TP. So the thing is, uh, whenever I will talk about, I will say that M is a Riemannian symmetric space, and we consider this isotropy representation. That means. We are uh, really considering this thing. We, I am taking G is equal to M, okay. and we have seen that uh, G is actually acts on M transitively. So this is the thing. Okay. Now definition. So let uh, G be a group. Which act smoothly and uh, transitively on a connected manifold M a Riemannian structure Q1 M
is said to be a gene variant. Gene variant. So if uh, this LG belongs to IAM or every G belongs to G. Now the thing is, so any man structure Q and M is said to be G in variant if LG belongs to I am for a very good So, discussion. Uh, so, let uh, G be a B group. And uh, uh, acting smoothly. And transitively. On a connected manifold. I am taking connectedness because remaining manifolds are by definition connected manifold. So, manifold. So our aim is to uh, aim to equip M with a G invariant remaining structure. This is our aim. Now let us uh, think what should the idea. Idea is very pretty clear. That uh, you sh you take this something like let. So this is the situation. G acts on M. Okay. Now you what you will do? You will take some P belongs to M. Then you will look at T P M. P belongs to M. You fixed. You fix this thing. You fix. P belongs to M. You look at TPM and you look at the inner product on TPM. Okay. Fix an inner product on TPM. On TPM. So as uh, this thing G acts on M transitively. So you can write any M is, is, is the form G dot. So M can be written as G dot. So you want to define the Riemannian metric on M. So what you define this QP at the point P, you just simply define that inner product. So QP UV is simply this uh, UV inner product. So UV belongs to TP. But you want to define for every point a, a inner product. So you at QM, UV, if UV belongs to TPM. So you use the translation. Okay. So that will be something like DL G inverse M U DL G inverse M. Let us see. Let us erase this line. So, so this is a DLG inverse U, MU, DLG inverse MV, and this is on uh, TPM. So this U he belongs to TMM. Since uh, this, uh, if you apply DLG inverse to M, you will land inside P. So this is this belongs to really uh, TPM. So the way you have defined, this is a, this will be a left invariant, uh, uh, G invariant remaining metric. Tapendu, is this idea is clear? What I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So, but uh, yeah, so this is this is our intuition says that this will be our uh, remaining metric, but there is an issue here. So suppose it may happen that you can write this M is equal to M2 and G for a M is equal to G1 dot P and G2 dot P. Okay. So you can use this fact, m is equal to g1p, uh, to give a 
definition of inner product to define QM. Okay. So you can, I am saying it once more, m is equal to, suppose m is equal to j dot p, you can use this fact that m is equal to j on p, you simply define this QM. So everywhere you have to put g1 here. Similarly, one can also use this representation m is equal to g2 p dot p to define QM. So there is an ambiguity in the uh, definition. So you need to resolve that. Okay. So what, what one, in this case, what one gets to get G1 is equal to G2 dot H, G2 H, where H is equal to, uh, this belongs to stabilizer of P inside G. So if you take this inner product, this inner product which you have started with, if you take that inner product is H invariant, then you can resolve this problem. If you will think a little bit, you will get that if you demand that inner product is H invariant, then uh, this will be, you can resolve this uh, issue. So let us prove that rigorously. So this is the idea. So, okay. so let uh, this be a H invariant inner product. Inner product on TPM. Oh, so let us, okay, so here let us write, okay, let P belongs to M be fixed, and H is equal to, so this G belongs to G, so that G dot P is equal to P, this stabilizer of P so. So this is a H million inner product on TPM. What does that mean? This means simply, so DLHP, you DLHP, this is really UV. Okay. This happens for all H belongs to H. For all UV belongs to TPM. So this is the meaning, and uh, this is equivalent to saying that tau h uh, respects the inner product. We got tau h u tau h, tau h is called DLHP. So all h belongs to h. U v belongs to p. So that means, okay, so let us write orthogonal. This is this thing. Okay. See, that one thing you should remember that H doesn't have any action on TPA. So, so what uh, DLHP at the point P has an action on TPA. So H invariant means this is really the inner product in the, is invariant under isotopy representation. Okay. So this thing you must keep you in, in your mind. So this may be it, it's okay. So so let uh, g1 dot p is equal to g2 dot p. So this implies uh, what uh, and let u comma b belongs to t of g1 dot p. Okay. Is equal to T of G to the P. So let us write this DL G1 inverse U G1 dot G1 dot P is equal to really U DL G1 inverse G1 dot P P. So this from here you will get this G1 is equal to really G2 H where H belongs to H. So <clears throat> this will from here you will get DL G1 inverse. G1 inverse is equal to H inverse G2 inverse and G1 dot P is really G2 dot P by assumption. This is U and so DL H inverse 
g2 inverse g2 dot p okay so this uh, you are taking this um, composition so this is dl h inverse dl g2 inverse g2 dot p u and g2 inverse g2 dot p this is p so dl h inverse dl g2 inverse g2 dot p now this uh, this factor belongs to tpm this belongs to tpm and the inner product is h invariant this belongs to tpm so this belongs to tpm since this inner product is h invariant so you will get this thing is really dl g2 inverse g2 dot p u so dl g2 inverse g2 dot p uh, so as uh, as this this is really h invariant hence uh, q of g dot p qb is equal to dl g inverse g dot p q dl g inverse g dot p v this inner product okay for all u p belongs to tp tg dot p n is well defined So as uh, G acts on M transitively, G uh, okay. So that's all in transitively, and therefore Q uh, is a Riemannian metric on. metric on uh, m it is also easy to show that also easy to show, see that q is invariant i have not shown that q is in the invariant but the way you have defined it is g invariant you can take it in a you can take it's not difficult to see conversely Hello. Is ah, Muna. Yes. How to how to get that H invariant inner product? I will come to to that. Okay. Conversely, if Q is a G invariant, hmm, uh, Riemannian metric on him. So it can be checked that. Uh, That um, QP is a H invariant. H invariant inner product on TPM. TPM. So conclusion. So conclusion is something. Conclusion: This uh, there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, set of all G invariant Riemannian matrix and M. And set of all H invariant in power one two.
So let us write this. So if you look at this V invariant, invariant structure and then one side and this a this has a one to one correspondence with H in the end. So, so what what do you mean by H in the end? This really the I showed up representation uh, who will act uh, uh, it, it, the inner property is really invariant under isotopy representation. Now, it may not be pos always possible to really uh, to get genuine the inner product from TPM. For instance, we will give some examples. Some like H is a group like SL2R and the isotopy representation is non trivial. Then you may not, uh, you, you will not get any H invariant inner product from TPM. So, this really, sorry, Mark. So, oh, when you talk about SL2R, uh, so if SL2R is your H, then what is G and what is M? I, I will give you one or two examples. Okay, so remark first one. So I am saying that SL, if, a, if a H is equal to SL2R, and you isotopy representation, it may happen that isotopy representation is non trivial. Then you will not get any. Uh, so H invariant in the program TPA. Because this I shot is entire has no finite dimension in the table presentation. Some system. I will give another example. Okay? So this is the part. So existence of H invariant. In a product depends upon the isotopy representation and then so it may possible That uh, you can also construct some example. Actually, I, have, I didn't really work the first exam example, but I am sure that it can be found out. The possible that uh, there exists uh, no H in the end in a product. So, this is Therefore, uh, M may not admit any cylinder and cylinder matrix. Second thing is, uh, if uh, this H is compact, then we have seen that we have seen that so that um, there will exist, there will always uh, exist. Uh, H invariant in a product on TPM. On TPM, so and say M positions. So. Thing is, uh, suppose uh, 
I sort of pre-presentation. Okay, if I if I sort of pre-presentation is reduced. We have, you know that uh, there exists a unique, uh, it's invariant inner product on PPM. On TPM. So in this case, up to salar material. Okay, up to salar material. So in this case, uh, there will exist uh, a unique uh, gene variant. Uh, Remain in a structure on end. Structure on end of the scalar mode. Fourth thing is a uh, so let the G be a connected link group. Then G acts on G by LF translation. Uh, and uh, this in this case, if you look at the stabilizer of E inside G, what is E? So by applying the previous formalism, we will get that word. Formalism. Get this thing that so G invariant means is left invariant remaining. We will get this thing. So left invariant remaining metric field. Remanian matrix on G. Since the stabilizer group is uh, identity, so this is really E invariant uh, inner product on TPM. So that is really set up all uh, inner products on TPM. This is inner product on and TPM is really if you perhaps on G. On the Lyazera. And this is the result actually we have proved before that. So uh, we are we are get, we just get back the, our old result. Okay. So we have also seen that we have also seen that uh, by invariant. Remanian matrix on G. On G really. This is really odd. This is one one correspond. This is odd G invariant. That uh, works on G. We have also seen that when we have proved that. Any connector link group with a by invariant remaining matrix is so we have to now. <clears throat> now, one thing that uh, you know that uh, if you can pro produce an example of link group G, okay, so let us see. Okay, let us let me write this uh, five first. So, the associated uh, remaining major. Measure this uh, with the 
gm bar entry management with We expect that that will be GM million, and that is true. Is always GM million. Okay. Now you know that there are some examples of uh, Lie groups. So, for instance, uh, G G Lie group G, and this is H. Okay, so that D group mod H doesn't have any uh, any G invariant measure, right? For instance, uh, uh, okay, in that case, if G mod S doesn't have G invariant measure, that means G mod R S uh, doesn't have any have any G invariant metric. Any G invariant metric. Okay. So to so there is a condition to when does G mod H has a, a G invariant measure? If you take this thing, uh, to have this G mod H uh, G uh, when does G mod H have a G invariant measure? You need this condition, delta G of H is equal to delta of H for all H belongs to H. So you need this condition, and the, if this condition is not true, then G mod H doesn't have any G invariant measure. So, for instance, you can take. I, I am giving a concrete example here. So let uh, example. Let G is equal to cell two. So let uh, this thing. Uh, you know this. Uh, H is equal to this minimal parabolic subgroup, which you people call like this. A and A and B. A greater than zero and n belongs to R. So this S L two R is a unimodular group, but H is not a unimodular group. So, so, so G is unimodular, but H is not a unimodular. That means uh, there exists some H belongs to um, H, so that delta G of S uh, is not equal to one, and this is not equal to sorry delta. Uh, this one is equal to really delta G of H. So therefore, G mod H um, doesn't have any any G invariant measure. Hence, uh, G mod H doesn't have any. Gene variant element. Post it, is it clear? Post it, are you there? Um, okay. Manoj, is it clear? Yeah. So now I want to give some application. Who are out there? Okay, sorry. Okay, so now I want to give a very important application. See, the thing is, um, <clears throat> one application, you know that this uh, upper half plane, this is really, this is really H is equal to, uh, Z belongs to C, so that imaginary part of Z is greater than zero. So you have this thing, the uh, Riemannian metric dx square for dx square by y square, right? 
So this is a Riemannian matrix in the upper half plane. To most of you, this was introduced in the context of solving a very important problem in the plane geometry. The problem is the following: this uh, whether this Euclid Euclid skipped postulate, so-called parallel postulate, is can be derived from the previous four axiom of Euclid. So that is a famous problem in plane. Uh, th that was a famous problem in. Plane geometry and people say that uh, that was open for almost 2,000 years and this Gauss and Lobasis he has solved this problem and this uh, actually the solution of that problem is interesting but what was really intriguing to me this how could somebody really come up with this type of uh, Riemann and metric what is the motivation for this matter so. And in this talk, we will uh, uh, try to answer this thing. So now the thing is, uh, uh, since uh, even though I am putting the things in, in more general setup, then uh, this whatever I will present, it can it, it can be explained to a MSc student which which uh, have little knowledge of uh, differential geometry. So uh, uh, so my what. what I am trying to just uh, say that uh, whatever I am going to present uh, about this example, this should not be studied by so-called uh, theory of symmetric space. Okay, it can be really explained to a MSc student. Okay, so what one does here actually just for the moment, not for the time moment, for the time being is really you forget that you do not know about this matter. Okay, so there is a group SL to us really. Which acts on it transitively, okay. And what you want, you want a really, we want an H invariant, a SL2 invariant, Riemannian metric on H. Uh, so what you will, you you fix this base point at identity, but a base point at I. So you fix the, and if you look at this stabilizer of I inside SL2 are this is really a SO2. Okay. So that means this is compact group. So therefore, uh, there exists some uh, uh, SO2 invariant inner product on TIH because the group is compact itself. So if you apply the previous formalism, so you can get a uh, Riemannian metric on this upper half plane, and you will see that. That Riemannian matrix is exactly this matrix. Dx square plus dy square. And so this is the motivation of this. This is the idea. So, but I want to show it vigorously. So, for that, I need to really clarify. Um, means I need to uh, clarify something. So, let us do those things first. So, okay. So, first fact is something like uh, this thing. Let uh, u subset of uh, Rn uh, be open. So since this is open, this is a, a smooth manifold. So let x1, x2, uh, xn uh, be a coordinate chart on you. Let q be a, a 0 to tensor. 0 to tensor on u. Then uh, this q is equal to really q of uh, summation of ij is equal to 1 to 1. q of del by del x del by del x dxi tensor dx. So this is actually uh, this is a very easy result. I mean, whatever I have uh, given you, whatever preliminary I have given you, you can prove this thing. Actually, in fact, I have uh, really stated this thing. If you look back, there's number 286 or something. Just wait, huh? 286. Actually, I have stated this thing. If, if this is con context of RN, I have said, but uh, 
there is a because since u is open set of rn so you can do it so let g be a 0 to tensor then g is equal to summation of ij if g can be written as fij dui tensor duj and how to get this fij if you will apply on this inductors g of del by del ui del by del uj then you will get exactly fij so this is the proof also so that is what I will use because I have to use some uh, little differential geometry somewhere. Yeah. So let us come back to that. You will use that and try yours. Now the thing is, uh, you have this, uh, some identification is going on. You have this C. And this is C can be identified with R2. So if you take this X plus IY, you will identify with this XY. Right? And Z is equal to really X plus IY. On R2, that will correspond to a matrix multiplication. And matrix multiplication, that, that, is a, that will correspond to linear map. And that linear map is R theta, really cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta, cos theta. So this you can check. This is just, so what I'm saying? Okay. So here J is equal to X plus uh, R y. Okay. J is equal to here X plus R y. Okay. Now, <clears throat> another thing that uh, since uh, here actually J uh, H, this is a Z belongs to C, so that imaginary part of Z, uh, this greater than zero is an open subset of R2. So that means we, there is a only one coordinate check and you ordinarily, you do not know any uh, much knowledge, you do not need to know much knowledge of differential geometry. You can just uh, work uh, your basic knowledge of calculus. So, and uh, here actually there are, uh, Two coordinate systems, and uh, this is these are del by del x and del by del y is a uh, uh, the coordinate vector. Let that, that del by that del by del x comma del by del y this be the coordinate vector. Yeah, the x y is the coordinate uh, system coordinate. Now let P belongs to S. If P belongs to S, then uh, P H is equal to R2 because this is an open subset of R2 and R2 can be identified with C. So you can say that uh, the tangent space of H at P is uh, either C uh, or R2. So we will be use both the pictures. Okay? Now second thing is, so if you look at this uh, thing del by del x p, so that will belong to o TPH. And TPH uh, we can really um, identify with R2 and that will correspond to what? 1, 0. TPH will, or del by del x p will correspond to 1, 0. And on C that will correspond to 1. So secondly, del by del y p, that will correspond to what? 0, 1. And if you look at, uh, if you are thinking identifying R2 with C, that will correspond to I. So let uh, A, B, comma C, D, this is a belongs to a really uh, SL2R. So let us see. Let uh, G is equal to really A, B, C, D, this belongs to SL2R. Now let us look at this thing d by dz of g dot z. So this is really d by dz. d dot z is really a z plus b by c z plus d. If you apply this chain rule, so this is really c z plus d square. c z plus d, okay, cross derivative of a z plus b, that will be a minus a z plus b. 
and that uh, the derivative of cz plus b that we see uh, look at this expression cz a cz a will cancel out so you will get what ad minus bc by cz plus b square so ad minus bc is equal to determinant of g by cz plus b square and determinant of g is 1 this is by cz plus b square so let us write what to how did we get so we get that so d by dz of <coughs> g z j is equal to 1 by cz plus d square so where this uh, g is equal to really uh, let us call this star here. Where this uh, g is equal to really a b c d. So let uh, u belongs to c. U is a complex number, and that uh, you know that this uh, T P S is really identified with c. So let u belongs to c. That is belongs to T P S. So then there exists a curve gamma from minus epsilon to, to epsilon to s with uh, gamma 0 is equal to p and gamma prime 0 is equal to u. So then what is uh, I want to calculate what d l g uh, p u. So this DLGPU, what is this thing? So this is this is the by definition of DI with D T T is equal to zero LG of gamma T. So this LG of gamma T is equal to really D by D T of T is equal to zero. This is called the G dot gamma T. Now I have calculated this D by G Z of G dot Z. I will use this fact. So here actually g is equal to abcd so let g is equal to abcd so if you should apply this thing that uh, see the thing d by dz of g dot z you apply the chain rule so that that will give you one by c gamma zero okay plus d square and gamma prime zero but gamma prime zero is equal to u, so you will get u cp plus b square. So hence we get this d l g p u is equal to u by cp plus d square. Okay, let us call this a double star. Where this uh, g is equal to really a b c d. Okay. So this is uh, the thing now. So uh, we fix the base point at identity. Fix the base point at i. If I fix the base point at i identity. Uh, but sorry, uh, not identity. This is I. Okay, if you look at, so what is the stabilizer of? Uh, okay, stabilizer I in uh, stabilizer of I inside a cell two. This is really SO two, and SO two is the collection of all this material R theta, which are, which is not defined by cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta. Cos theta. This is really theta minus two. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we want to really uh, find the find a cell to our invariant matrix on H. Okay. For that uh, thing is uh, so by previous discussion. We need to find and an H invariant, H really, and a SO2 invariant 
here stabilizer is SO2. SO2 is by inner product on TIH. On TIH, this is really R2. Okay. So, and this we identified that this can, can be identified with it. So, what, what, what does that mean? That, that, so what is the meaning of SO2 invariant inner product R2? So, that inner product, okay, so, so let us say this. Uh, um, no problem, this that inner product will satisfy something like this dl r theta i q dl r theta i q u v that will satisfy for all u for all theta belongs to r and for all u v belongs to u v belongs to r2 so that will satisfy that should satisfy this thing. So meaning of this is theta v v. This doesn't really mean that. Okay. It just means this thing. Pritam is this clear? This doesn't mean. Pritam, Tapendu. Yes, yes. This doesn't mean, this line doesn't mean there, okay. So let us see what is the DLR theta U. So, so see the thing is here U V belongs to R2 I am picturing, but since uh, when I calculate this DLGPU, I identified this uh, tangent space as the complex plane because the action is given in the in a in the complex plane. So this is this is convenient for me. So so let us first understand this. What is uh, this uh, thing means? So for uh, so let U belongs to. Uh, C, this is really TIH. Okay. So, so DL R theta I, okay. So, let us see. So, you, you, you have to use this some formula, the double star, this double star here, some double star of God. Some double star of of previous phase, uh, we get this thing uh, DL R theta okay, DL R theta I U. So this is we, what will be this U by C P plus D square uh, O U. And what is C in this case? C is that's right, this is cos theta. C is sine theta, okay, sine theta. And D is cos theta. So C is, is equal to sine theta. And this base point P is equal to identity here. Uh, P is I, sine theta I, plus uh, D is really cos theta. And look at the denominator. This is really uh, <coughs> e to the power I theta. So this is really e to the power minus 2i theta u. So hence we get hence we get this uh, so dl r theta i u u is equal to what? e to the power minus 2i theta u. And this is u belong to C. But if you change in the R2 picture, so this is really nothing but uh, multiplication by a complex number, e to the power minus 2 theta. So on TIH is equal to R2. If you go to the R2 picture, then DL R theta i 
is real nothing but a rotation i minus 2 to 3 so i i, I you get that so hence we need to find an inner product on r2 so that so since dl r theta i is equal to r minus t to theta so from this line you will get what we need to and find an r inner product this on r2 so that yes this r minus 2 theta u r minus 2 theta v is really uv for all uv uh, belongs to r2 and theta belongs to r2. Hence, this uh, theta must satisfy, this inner part must satisfy. So, since theta is arbitrary, so you can really this thing. That is uh, that is inner part the inner product right, uh, this thing is a so two invariant in the above sense in the sense of uh, really triple let us call this as triple star the sense of uh, triple star. So, so I am using the same language. This is this inner product is about in variant, and here actually also I am using the same language that SO2 invariant, but the meanings are different. Here actually I mean that this this should satisfy this triple star, okay. And in the last lecture we have seen that uh, there is this uh, since SO2 acts on R2 reducibly, there exists a unique. Uh, um, uh, unix uh, uh, inner product like this okay. and, and any such inner product uh, uh, is, uh, is is a scalar multiple of our usual l2 inner product we have also seen that since uh, since so 2 r sum r2 irreducibly We have seen that so let any inner product on R2 satisfying triple star of a previous phase. Uh, is a scalar multiple of Muna, you mean uh, transitively, so 2x on R2? Irreducibly. Irreducibly, so then what's the, I don't understand meaning. Action of x2 on R2 is irreducible. So, uh, no, no, means... Uh, so, the last lecture, we, have you missed that lecture? Yeah, I think I, yeah. So, I have... Okay, fine. Yeah. So I have shown that in uh, R2 there is this a unique union product uh, up to okay. um, uh, which really respects this uh, so that uh, that inner product is a SO2 invariant. Okay. Yeah. And the how does but I, I, I this dot dot product is SO2 invariant, right? In particular, uh, that example also. Dot product is in invariant, but I am saying that this choice has to be some uh, this unique, right? Up to scalar multiple. Yeah. So one can ask this why we are choosing this L2 in our product, right? And this is the answer. Okay. We have seen that any certain style is scalar multiple of uh, usual L2 in our product. Hence, we fix the usual inner product at usual L2 in our product at uh, T is. So, on TIS, this is really R. 
by the way so2 action on part 2 is not transitive right why oh so2 action on part 2 is not it's not transitive yeah need the translation also yes yeah. <laughs> okay l2 is a part on tis is at 2 okay so we will fix this thing and then since this is a so2 invariant then we can and thus we get a riemannian metric on We get a remaining metric. Okay, this got a cell to our end. Okay, remaining metric Q on it. So this is the thing I get. Now I want to find the expression of Q on it. So let uh, P is equal to really U plus I B. Belongs to us. Okay. So that uh, this this thing will imply that what is the thing? X of x of p is equal to u. X coordinate of p is equal to u, and y coordinate of p is equal to v. Okay. Now if you look at this matrix, let g is equal to really what? The g is equal to really this thing. This uh, root v. U plus U by uh, root B and uh, zero root B. So this G dot I. So okay. So let us write here. Let G is equal to root B U by root B zero one by root B. This belongs to cell two R. So G dot I. This is really root p i plus u by root p is one by root p. This is really u plus i v. This is really p. Okay, this is p. Now, what is g inverse? G inverse is equal to uh, one by root b. Something is star and zero root b. Okay. So now uh, what is let w belongs to C and C is really T of P H. Uh, okay. So let us calculate this D del G inverse of W at the point P. And DL G inverse P of W at the point W, and really, if you have this, some expression was there. Okay, so this is U by C P plus D square, and if you look at this thing, so C is equal to zero. So G inverse was something like this thing, uh, root uh, what was this? One by root B, something like star zero root. B. So c is equal to zero. Zero. So this will you will get this u by b because root b square is so u by b. So if you only use that thing, then so you will get what this is the w by b. So by using star. Now listen this carefully. So D L G inverse P. So I took at the del by del x P. Now del by del x P is really identified with. Uh, if you look at, uh, I have so told you that del by del x P you can identify with one. Okay, in the complex plane because here W is in the in the complex number. So that is really this is really uh, one by v. Okay. But you want to go to the R two picture, so this is really uh, one by v one zero. So this is belongs to R two. Yeah, this belongs to C. Now similarly, so D L G inverse 
P del by del y P. So this is del by del y P is identified with I in the complex thing. So this is I by B. So this is really one by B zero one. So okay. So now the thing is. So remember these things. Now I want to calculate uh, Q of uh, del by del x, del by del x at the point P. So this is really Q P del by del x P, del by del x P. Okay, by definition. Now this is really D L G inverse P. The key, okay, key, key P is equal to what? G dot I, right? So this is really Q of G dot I, where G was that matrix, which this, this, this matrix. Okay. So Q of G dot I, del by del X P, del by del X. So this G, del G inverse P, uh, okay, so this is really uh, what del by del x p. So d uh, l g inverse p del by del x p. So this is really what uh, one by v one zero, right? This is one by V one zero. This is really and uh, this is inner total on R two, so this will you will get this is one by V square. Hence what what I am getting? Hence Q by del del x del by del x P this is really one by V square and V is the Y coordinate of P. So I can write this one by Y P square, but you can Free this uh, variable p, so you will get q of, of del by del x, uh, del del q of del by del x, del by del x is equal to one by y square. Similarly, okay. Now, what q of q of del by del y, del by del y of p? So this is really q p of del by del y p, del by del y. So that is really, this is really, so by this Q of G dot I, so del by del Y, P is really G dot I, del Y, G dot I. So by, so this will be D del G inverse I, and so G dot I, or P. 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 Uh, del Y del Y P. This is little bit calculation only. So, so this is really we have seen that this is one by B zero one. Because uh, one by V zero one. So this is really one by V zero one. So this is really one by V square. And this is so this is one by Y P square. So one by Y P square. Okay. So hence we get what? Thus uh, hence uh, this Q of del by del Y del by del Y P is really 1 by y p square. Now this implies this q of del y del y del y del y is really 1 by y square. Now uh, hence similarly we get this thing. If you calculate this thing q of del y del x del y del y this is equal to 0. Now since 
this q is very man in metric this is a symmetric thing uh, so this will be get, uh, you will get this thing is equal to q of del by del x del by del y this is really zero okay now so we will apply uh, now thus q is equal to so this is really q of del by del x del by del x so dx tensor dx okay. plus uh, u of del by del x del by del y dx tensor dy plus q of del by del y del y del x dy tensor dx so this is plus q of del by del y del y del y dy tensor dy and dx or tensor dx people call this as a dx square dy tensor dy people call this as a dy square and this is also zero this is equal to zero and this q of del by del x is equal to this is one by y square and this is really one by y square so if you put everything together so hence uh, you will get this q is equal to really dx square by plus dy square by y square okay so this is the hence uh, the the um, q is a uh, q is the required the uh, um, SL2 invariant uh, Riemann and metric okay, on edge. Now, since this isotropic representation is irreducible, so it seems actually you representation is irreducible. This Q is the unit. SL2 are invariant, Riemann and metric on H up to scalar multiple. Metric on H up to scalar multiple. So this is a very interesting thing. Now this is actually I have almost done this thing elementary way. But if you really know a little bit of language of the uh, differential form, then you can uh, little uh, you can do make the calculation little more easier. So in the uh, what happens in the language of differential form? So as, uh, from this really something like if you observe that Qi is nothing but dx i square. Plus uh, dy square, uh, sorry, dx square plus uh, dx square plus dy square and dx square uh, dy square restricted at the point i. And what is q of g dot i? This was really nothing but dlg inverse, lg inverse star qi. If you know how to calculate the LG inverse star and all those things, then you can really um, uh, calculate. Uh, you can simplify the proof a little bit. I just want, I will give one exercise, then I will stop. Exercise. So, um, using above ideas and without using this. Uh, the energy color transform and something like that. And so you should not uh, use the isomorphism between the upper half plane and the unit base is so that um, dx square plus dy square plus minus one minus x square minus y square square is the unique uh, su one comma one invariant uh, in a product uh, in and matrix in 
metric on this uh, on the open unit d on the open unit is d d is equal to z belongs to c so that not z is less than one so uh, we will see later this isotope representation is very uh, important thing and later it will be uh, really it will be used to define something called irreducible symmetric space and uh, with this i will like i would like to stop i will be happy if there is any question so sl2r and so2 are the remaining symmetric pair here right uh, in this case sl2r and so2 is the remaining symmetric pair but uh, i have not um, See, I am not using anything about remaining symmetric square. Okay. See, the thing is, this is not really the. I am not talking about remaining symmetric square. Okay, you must understand. I am just taking a uh, um, upper half plane, and I am showing that any uh, there is a group S L two R which acts naturally on this upper half plane, and I want to uh, get a S L two R invariant remaining metric on it. And I am getting that is precisely d x square plus d y square by y square. And I am also showing that any such uh, remaining metric is really the scalar multiple of that thing. Okay. So this uh, really this is the thing. But it is a different fact that uh, you, I could have uh, proved the generality theory of remaining symmetric uh, space, remaining symmetric pair. Then actually, I could have derived this as a consequence, or corollary, or something like that. But I just deliberately, I just uh, didn't do that because uh, this is also an interesting question. Okay, and as I said that uh, this uh, the people do not mostly people do not talk about the where does this remaining metric come from when they talks about Poincaré upper half plane or Poincaré days. Okay, and that is a very Means that may be very uh, uh, that is maybe very interesting question to some of some of you. So I I have just explained that. So you you are saying that uh, this is how the metric came. I I do not know. I am just uh, means uh, see the thing is history. I do not really know how this metric came, but I am just explaining this in a different light and this. You understand what I'm saying? I have yeah. not say saying that this probably uh, mathematics is a strange thing. How something is coming, you do not know, right? For instance, uh, people, if you will ask somebody really, so how uh, this, uh, how does, uh, what is the motivation for this Mobius action? Okay, mostly teachers will tell that uh, the thing that uh, it is really you look at the. Automorphism group of unit D's or some some complex plane, you will get this type of maps. But that is not the way it it is it comes. It comes in a very strange way, right? Your, who knows that? Uh, how does it come? Is it clear? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Pritam, Tapendu, Supanadi. So, what are you what are you going to do next? I, as I said, that uh, I want to really prove that G H comma H in the next class or next uh, next lecture. In the next lecture, I, I will try to. Uh, we will see some interesting corollaries of this thing isotropy representation first. This thing, and then actually we will move try to prove that theorem. If if, uh, if I will have time, then I will go to. We will prove that theorem. G G comma H is the remaining symmetric pair. Then it is a it will give rise to a remaining symmetric pair. Okay. You just uh, another thing actually you should actually at least try this exercise. This um, uh, in the this picture because everything every calculation is there. So you just try to do that. Supanadi. Thank you. Yes. Is it clear? Or what? What did I? 
Okay, Pritham, will I please continue? I will stop recording. Yeah.